the microphone on the whole time. For real? Yeah. I don't know if y'all are just now hearing this, but I just cut the mic on. Uh, <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> damn, I forgot about that. That's my bad. But we're going to go. We're talking about responsibilities. We'll go back in the circle again. Uh, <laughs> Shay. No, that's not bad. We got to see this. We're going to talk about responsibilities with you, but we're going to start it all back over. So, all right. So go ahead, uh, Darren. Uh, all right, so it's like every time I get locked up, I say I'm gonna do this and do that when I get out, like positive stuff. Then I get out and I see I get the old feelings back, so I be like, fuck it, basically. So I do the same shit I do all the time. Then I fuck around, get locked up again. Then I say the same shit again, like, all right. I'm gonna chill when I get back out. Oh, I ain't gonna do this. Oh, I'm gonna do this this way. And then I get out and I fuck up and I fuck up and I fuck up. Cause I'm not used to like doing legal shit for real. Like it's hard for me to do something legally and actually work for that shit. Like I don't know how to do that for real. Like I mean, I try sometimes, but then in the back of my mind, I be thinking I could be doing something else that could make me move faster than what I'm doing right now and I feel like I'm in one spot. So I just need to work on myself with that for real. Cause it's like I miss the thrill of like sacrifice. Like I don't like doing something if I don't have nothing that's pushing me to do it for real. And that's all. Thank you, sir. I'm Kurt, I'm an addict. Hey Kurt. I didn't have any responsibilities when I was in high. Except like, you know, like like getting high and getting my next job, you know. Um, you know, my whole life, my parents provided for me until I was, you know, just, until I was probably like 25. And then they were finally like, you know, you gotta grow up. So they gave me the boot and I got locked up and no, no commissary, no nothing. So it's like, finally at that point is when I finally started to like, realize that I needed to take some responsibility for my life. You know, I'm 28 now, and it's like, I'm looking back like, man, what did I really have to show for it? Like, nothing. You know, all this fucking time, I've been going, getting high, and just stealing my parents' money, and stealing whoever's money, for real, that I can get my hands on. And I just didn't care. A job, I'd get a job, probably last about a month. As soon as I get my first, second paycheck, I'm going off and get high again. Um, but, like, since I've been clean, since I've been out, I've gotten a whole shit ton of responsibility. Like I have to, you know, go to work every day. I have to pay my bills. Like I have, like I don't have anybody to support me anymore. You know, my dad's still there. You know, my mom passed away, but my dad's not gonna fork out nothing for me anymore. You know what I mean? Like, and so I support myself, and for the first time in my life, like I'd actually say, like. I support myself. Like no one else gives me anything. I do it on my own, and that's what's so hard about recovery for me at first. Because like I want to, I'm an addict. I want to be able to do it my way. You know what I mean? And like, so when I got out before I relapsed, like when I relapsed, it was like all this responsibility that was given to me, and then I, I got I took it all and was like, all right, well, you know, I can do all this shit. Like I'm doing good. I got this job. I'm making this much money. Like. I can do this recovery thing without the meetings and all this crap, you know? Neglecting to go to meetings, neglecting to call people, talking to my sponsor and stuff. And sure enough, like, as soon as I took my will back, I went out there and got high and overdose, you know? And I got locked back up. And, you know, since I've been out this time, I've <coughs> kind of humbled myself more and been able to take my responsibilities, but at the same time, like, learn how to balance my life with, like, recovery, work, you know, step work. Just, you know, and then like social life and shit like that, like learn how to balance everything out because like sometimes it gets hard. Like sometimes I come home from work, I don't feel like going to a meeting and shit. Like I just worked all day. Like why do I gotta go to a meeting? And then I gotta think, it's like, if I don't, like look what happened the last time I saw going to a meeting. You know, I, I relapsed, you know? And all, um, you know, I just got the hell of, like a really big responsibility placed on my shoulders like two weeks ago. Like they made me the house manager of the house I'm at. And, like, that's like a whole, I, I can't even tell you like how much it's catapulted my recovery. Like just being able to look out for people and like, you know, <coughs> I had to kick, kick a couple people out for getting high and it's like, 
I hated it. Like that's the only part of my job I think that I was like, fuck, dude, this is gonna suck. But at the same time, it gave me that reminder of like, what's waiting out there for me, you know what I mean? Like anybody can, you know, go out at any point, even though, you know, it might be someone who thinks doing good. And then, you know, and the thing with the recovery house is like, you get to know these people and then they start, you know, you start, you can start seeing their behavior. Like I can see the behavior of some people and I'm like, yeah, he's about to relapse. And damn sure if it don't happen, you know what I mean? It, it just sucks, you know what I mean? I just kind of pull away and I kind of like numb myself to it because it's like, bottom line, like I gotta do this for me. I ain't doing this for any of y'all. I ain't doing this for my mom, I ain't doing this for my dad. Like I'm doing this for me because I'm tired of living the way I was living. You know, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to keep myself sober, you know? But um, you know, responsibility is a big thing. Like normal people, Get up, get get up, go to work every day. You know, they take their medicine. You know, my dad's got leukemia, he's gotta take his medicine or he could die. Like, I gotta take my medicine, which is like recovery. Like if I don't get my recovery, then I'm gonna die. Bottom line, you know what I mean? But it is what it is, you know. I guess I guess that's it. Thank you, Thank you. Hey everybody, my name is Shay. Hey Shay. Um so uh Freedom comes with responsibility, right? Like, I always thought that responsibilities held me down and kept me from doing the things that I wanted to do, right? But as I grew older and went through a whole lot more and experienced some stuff that I really don't think that I had to experience, but I needed it. I really did to get to this point. Um, that I realized that responsibilities give me freedom, freedom to, to choose what I want to do. Um, and uh, so we're gonna go around the room and we're gonna talk about some of the freedoms that we have now that we didn't have while we were using, right? Like uh, choice, that's a real big one for me. Like, it's a real big one for me because the only thing that I had on my mind when I was using was the getting and using and finding ways and means to get more. That was my lifestyle. Was that yeah, if I wasn't going for that next one, I was going for that next 10. And, uh, Today I can actually choose what I want to do when I wake up without having to go get well first. Like, I can go and get a cold coffee from Wawa at 6 o'clock in the morning and go to work. Cold. Cold. <laughs> yeah. Frozen. With extra protein. <coughs> um, yeah. Extra espresso flavor. All that good stuff. Right? Um, people got me hooked. I'm an addict. I can't help it. Um, but yeah, man, I can go to work, and when I come home, I got some money, and I don't have to spend that money on getting that next one. I can actually go out and buy a pair of shorts if I want to. I can pay my rent, my cell phone bill. I can go out to eat anywhere that I want to go out to eat. Like while I was locked up, the only choices that I had was shinding or tea handle potatoes, <laughs> right? Like that's all I had the choice of. So today, I can actually choose whether or not y'all want to eat a chicken sandwich or a burger or a salad or some Chick-fil-A or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Like I have choices, I can pick up the phone and call anybody that I want to without hearing that you have one minute left, right? Like I couldn't stand that shit. I couldn't stand having to say my voice and my password a million times before it would go through because the football game was on. <laughs> like that shit pissed me off. I get to choose what I watch on TV. Like I can choose who I spend time with because I know that you don't like your cellmate. Cause I don't like the guy that I sleep in the fucking room with now. <laughs> I can't stand his ass, right? But I had the choice of whether or not I want to stay clean and live in this house or I want to go back out there and try it myself. Cause that would be me living my own program and making the program fit my life instead of my life fit the program. Which I'm still struggling with, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't have patience. I want to say that I have patience. But I really don't, like I have patience with certain things. Like, um, but I still want what I want when I want. Like, I still want to be able to take care of me, myself, and mass. Like I don't want to have to ask for handouts. I don't want to have to do, you know what I'm saying, have to ask for charity. Like, that hurts my pride. And pride is the number one killer in this disease. But I still got it. You know what I'm saying? I still got my ego. I know what I used to do, and I know what I used to make, and I know what used to happen yeah, in my life. So today I choose to do something different. Like my choices revolve around 
doing the next right thing, no matter who's watching, right? Like, I enjoy taking piss tests today. Like, back then, Jay used to be the biggest stress in my life, right? But now, Kurt used to watch me pee all the time, right? Because he's my house man, you know what I'm saying? So, it's good for me, it's great for him. <laughs> you know, like, that's the time. Like, that's the type of stuff that we do today, you know what I'm saying? We clean piss and we get all types of overnights and we get to, you know what I'm saying? Like, we get to spend time with our family without having, you know what I'm saying, get well every three hours in the bathroom. And then they have to worry about something missing when you leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can go to my mama's house at any time today. And she'll welcome me with open arms. You know what I'm saying? Back then, she couldn't stand the fact that I was even within 50 feet of her. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of stuff that I can do today. Like, I can spend time with people that I don't even like. But because they want the same thing that I want, you know what I'm saying? Y'all deal with it. Y'all put up with my differences because we got some, some similarities. And that's the big picture. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I came home, yeah, if I would have chosen to go ahead and get a pack of cigarettes and see the girl before I came to this recovery organization, I would have relapsed, and I know it, you know what I'm saying? So the first thing that I did before I cashed my check, before I went and seen the girl, before I got some cigarettes, is I came here and made it known that I was home, you know what I'm saying? Because every person counts, no matter how big, no matter how small, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're all here for one another, you know what I'm saying? And when somebody reaches out, you gotta reach back out to them. Like, that's what this program teaches you. That's what this program's for. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it. The channel, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about freedom and what she can do today and what she can. I'm trying I'm an addict. Hey, Jan. Um, so, responsibilities. Um, I'm gonna completely change what I said in the bottom. Um, responsibilities come with, I mean, when you're using, you don't care what you're doing. You don't care what you have to do. You don't care what's gonna happen if you do this or that. Um, and it probably wasn't, I was set, excuse me, I was in jail and I was in the shoe for like 50 days and I was just thinking like, like I have nobody to call, I don't have anywhere to go when I leave here, I don't have any family, I don't have a job, I don't have a career, I haven't gone to school, I have no real connections with anyone and that's because I didn't have any responsibilities. Like, it's a responsibility to have a relationship with someone or go to work or um, just take care of yourself. And with just me, I completely ended up losing completely anything and everything in my life, family, friends, money, anything. And I was left to myself. And until you really want better for yourself, none, none of that is going to matter. Like, I, today, stop laughing at me. I'm nervous. Excuse me. You're doing good. I'm really nervous. You're doing good. Um, today, because I want so much better for myself, I really only have, like, they're not big responsibilities. Like, if someone asks me to clean something, they ask me because they know I'm going to do it or at a recovery, recovery organization to be an assistant house manager. They feel like I will do a good job at that. That's scary. But. <laughs> and look, I think it shows a lot of growth. Like if they're, they're asking somebody to be an assistant house manager who has an ankle bracelet on her ankle. Oh yeah. Like that's got to show, you know, like the willingness and the determination. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> Yeah, this ankle monitor, it forced me to, I mean, I wanted to do different, um, but I don't think I would have made it from the jail door there. And, um, I'm, I mean, a lot of people can be angry when they have a GPS on, you can't leave the state, I'm mandated to a certain place, can't leave there, and today I'm happy for it because it's saving my life. Like, it's a weekly responsibility to pay for this thing, and piss test for it, and I'm happy to do it because it's saving my life otherwise I wouldn't be here but if you just give something a chance and really want to do it then you can have a chance at a better life and to be able like she said just go somewhere without worrying all the time like I used to could not go to the store because I didn't want to see a cop or anything um yeah I'm 
And like, let me, I want to say something like, who are you? I'm Jeremy, I'm behind the, the camera recording. But like, <laughs> like recovery to me is an active change in ideas, you know, thoughts, behavior, and emotional responses. And I see recovery in you because instead of being pissy, you got an ankle monitor on, like you're grateful, you know? So it's that, it's that perception change. Um, like this program gives us a better perspective on our life which creates our own happiness. Like why be pissy about an ankle you know, bracelet? Like you have the decision and the choice to feel how the fuck you want to feel today or feel how the fuck I want to feel today. And today I want to feel grateful. Thank God I'm alive. I'm not shooting dope. I'm not stealing nobody's shit. Regardless if I got an ankle bracelet on, you know, like, like glass half full type shit. You know what I'm saying? And like that's, that's recovery to me. And I see recovery in every one of these people on a daily basis. Like they're all fucking doing good. Um, and they're all willing, like they don't have to be here. You know what I'm saying? Not, none of them have to be here. They're doing this on their own. So they can show y'all, show the people who's locked up. Like there's a better way, like life is good. Even like you don't have to get high and use drugs and, and do shady shit and live shady and try to beat the next man out of, out of a dollar to be happy, man. And I pass with that. Thank you for sharing, Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mason. Hi, hey, Mason. Mason. Um, I just got out of jail for doing a year, and I'm only four days out, and I never thought that I would be sitting here <laughs> making an inspirational video mm -hmm. to other people. Maybe I don't have as much knowledge as everybody else in here on all the topics, but uh, I'm trying. And, uh, you know, normally, Four days out, I'd already be high and might already have a bad habit. You know, but uh, hopefully there's a good chance that I can make it through recovery. You know, and there's a chance that I might not make it the first time. But I just want to let y'all know that if I do right now in this moment, I feel good. And it's nice to get up and and I put shower shoes on in the shower and I get to enjoy all the small freedoms so far every day just from not, you know, strap up shoes, tying my shoes up and what color clothes I want to wear and uh, getting to sit in between girls and stuff like that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we keep coming back. <laughs> yeah, everybody's happy around me and uh, it's a good place, man. And I'm, I hope uh, if y'all get out of jail, y'all definitely think about coming to a recovery place with that. that. Thank, Thank you, Sharon. I'm Whitney. Are we going on freedom? Freedom. Okay. freedom. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, I guess when I was using, I thought I had all the freedom in the world, but that's just because no matter what I did, what I wanted, when I wanted to do it, and how, but never the right way, I never got anything good out of it, nothing could happen <clears throat> at all. Um, now with the freedoms I have, it's a lot of instant gratification with it. Um, I get to have the freedom to be myself and figure out who the fuck that is. Um, I don't know. You're doing good. <laughs> How much lean time you got? Um, 55 days. Have you ever been? In, is this your first time in recovery? Yes. That's first a miracle. time ever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we it's did a miracle. Um, yeah. It's you got, really good. You got, are all your friends in recovery? Are you hanging out with, with old people placing things and shit like that? Like, how are you staying clean on a daily basis? Like, what are the, some I of the things that you're doing? Good um, I stay with everyone in recovery. I, I will. Fortunately, a lot of people here I did used to hang out with, so I have previous friendships with and get to do it together with them. So I heard you talk about the good herd. Like, um, talk about that. Like, what, what is the good herd for people who's locked up who, who's never heard that analogy before? There's, um, you can tell the people here that actually want to do this and get this done or are just here to gain some trust back or just here for court and just doing this just to have another go around to be able to do that. Um, 
you can, if, once you're here and you have a clear mind, you can definitely see the people that have, for the most part, all the people that actually want this. Some people will surprise you, but that's what addiction is. That's what it'll do to you. But just people who do the steps work, like, who are basically serious about their recovery. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that come into recovery and um, and everybody's not serious about it. You know, everybody has, everybody's different and on their different pathways in life. And um, the reasons for somebody coming uh, to recovery might not be authentic or, or might not be um, conducive to your recovery. Somebody, you know, could just be faking the funk, going through the motions. But, you know, I guess you're kind of saying that, like, once you get here and, and your head's clear and shit, that uh, you can kind of see who's serious about the recovery and, and, and who's not serious. So the could hurt are, are people who are serious about the, their recovery. Like, I always say this, you are who you attract. Um, you know, so if you're, you're half-assed um, with your recovery, you know, and, and you're just going through the motions, um, like, you're going to attract people who are like that. Um, birds with feather flock together. So this, I encourage like the people who are locked up, you get in here and you ask, the, you ask around, like if you don't know, or just, you know, sit with some people, sit with some people, get with some people with some clean time, get fucking numbers, you know, from people who are here. Um, but definitely, man, definitely like, like Shay said, like come here as soon as you get out, you know, like it, it's a, we're like, we're all like a bad decision away from fucking getting high, you know? And all it takes is that split second and that, that split thought for you to act on that impulse. Um, and after doing some time, like, I know in the past, man, that, that's what I've done. I got out and I, and I used right away and it took me a long time um, if, to get back in recovery and usually after a, a, a jail stay. Um, so you can save yourself a lot of pain and misery um, like this this way works like we're living proof of it man you just got to get through the hard times but it, like it's worth it like I, I've never heard anybody like regret staying clean um, you know like like I don't do that I don't wake up like damn I wish I got fucked up yesterday mm -hmm. but like I know there's been a lot of times in my past where I've relapsed and I'm like fuck or, or I've gotten high and I'm like fuck fuck so life is good today all right Chris <laughs> my main man Chris did a little stint at New Kent. <laughs> We've been in and out of um, recovery for a little while. My name is Chris and I'm an addict. Hey, Chris. Chris. I remember when I was sitting in jail, and even before I was in jail, when I was at a recovery organization, I was constantly complaining about how recovery was limiting my freedom. It was limiting how long I was allowed to stay out. It was limiting who I was supposed to be hanging around with. and. Um, limiting phone usage, all sorts of things. So I felt I had a negative outlook and it was making me feel trapped. And then looking back at it now that I have clean time, when I look back on what I was using, it's crazy to think that that was actually what I was considering freedom. Because like other people have mentioned, I wasn't able to go anywhere for longer than six to eight hours unless I had something with me. People would invite me on vacations, and if I didn't have enough money to last me for a weekend, I'd turn it down. I remember going home for Christmas and puking six times during midnight mass. My mom had to tell her I had the flu, and she, I mean, she was onto it, but it was horrible. It was the worst church service I'd ever been through. <laughs> and it just was really bad because as much as I had the freedom to get what drugs I wanted and commit what crimes I had to commit, in order to support my habit, I wasn't free in my mind and soul sure as I wasn't. Today I actually have a little bit of freedom in my thinking mm. because not every single second of every day is revolved around how I'm going to get money and how I'm going to get more. And then even when I'm high, I'm not even thinking. I'm really just sitting there like, ah, oh, finally I'm high. And then and slowly that goes away and your mind starts racing. Like, what can I do to keep this going? I want to stop thinking. Today I'll just be sitting down sometimes, keeping myself out because I'm having some weird train of thought that makes me think of something funny, which makes me think of this movie, which makes me think of this person. I don't know, recovery is actually kind of starting to get fun. And <laughs> I'm still working on it. I still got a long ways to go. I still think about getting high, but I just know the consequences aren't worth it. And I also have to work on not faking the funk because I love just preaching some bullshit to make people think I got the shit down because it 
It's all I learned how to do in the RISE program, but if you're on the RISE, where's this going? Um, <laughs> pass. Thank you for sharing. Is it on me? It's all on you, buddy. I'm Kurt. Hey, okay. man. Freedom, man. Freedom's great. I got a lot of freedom today. I can do what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, when I want to do it, like Shay was saying, pretty much all the old, you know, sitting in jail, not being able to do anything. You can't really take a piss without somebody watching you. You know, I fucking have to watch them pee all the time. It's crazy. Man. He doesn't laugh. <laughs> it's funny. I'm making both their hands up. <laughs> but yeah, for real, like freedom, like, man, I, I can't even like begin to explain how good my life is today. Like I'm facing three to five years when I go back to court. And okay, whatever. If I get locked up, I get locked up. Guess what? I promise you I'm going fucking clean. And I'm going to come out clean. And I'm going to have that much strong of a story to give somebody. Because I'm not willing to die. <coughs> I just went to a friend's funeral Friday, an overdose, you know, and it's this kid I grew up with. And like, this shit's not a game like anymore. Like at first it was fun, but once you reach that point where it's like, it's not fun no more, like you have to have it, you gotta do it, I gotta go get this drug, like, I have to do it. Like, I would literally wake up in the morning and tell myself that I'm not going to get high today, I'm not going to get high today, I'm stopping. And at some point, I'm out there, I'm getting high. You know what I mean? Out of my control. I cannot control it at all. You know, and I, I just can't live like that no more. I, I can go to the river, I can go swimming, I can fucking go play guitar, whatever. I can go to McDonald's, to Wendy's, to fucking Chipotle. That's my new addiction. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. That stuff's good. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like, I, I can, I have the choice to be able to do what I want to do. Like, and even when like there would be consequences with it, I have the choice to look like I got, I'm, I'm clear headed now. Like I'm almost got six months clean, and it's like I can I can play the whole picture through. Like I mean, for me to sit here and try to say that I don't think about getting high sometimes, I'd be fucking lying my ass off. Mm -hmm. Like I'll be riding the work truck and riding through a certain part of town, like or past a bathroom where I used to stop off in and fucking you know shoot up and be like, damn. I should go get high, man. I can probably do it one time, you know, be clean for a while. I won't, get, I won't have a habit, you know. Even if I do catch a habit, I can get some suboxins and take them and, you know, I'll be good. But then I play the whole whole picture through and I'm like, man, fuck that. What the hell are you thinking? Like, and then I'll go do something. I'll just, like, someone always, always told me, like, earlier, like, years ago when I was in the rooms, they were like, if, if you know, when you start thinking about using, like, go do the dishes. You know, like occupy your mind with something else as soon as that thought comes. And like, you'd be amazed at how when you start, when you put your mind to something else, like if you go to actually do the dishes, and you're doing the dishes and you're chilling and you're doing the dishes, and dude, the thought completely goes away. You know, and that's the thing, like the thought will go away. Like the, you relapse before you even pick up the drug, that whole obsession, 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 where you can't stop thinking about it. Try and just put something else in there, like, Think about some food or something, you know? Whatever the hell works for you, for real. For me, I say the serenity prayer, like, all the time. Like, I wake up in the morning, I say it, you know? And I mean, I've always been religious and everything, but now, like, being in the program, it's more of like a, like a spiritual thing. Like, you know, I have my belief in my God, you know, and that's all I need, you know what I mean? I don't need anybody else. And you get to that point where it's like, you know, it sucks to be alone, but like, at some point, you will get to the point where you're okay with yourself. And like, okay, if everyone's said and gone, and everybody that is around me is fucking up, like, I'm okay to be with myself today, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can deal with it, and like, I can only do that if I stay clean, though. Like, if I get high, like, that just goes right out the window. So like, freedom to be able to, you know, be myself, to just, not have to like put a mask on to be able to um you know make good conscious decisions like look know. one thing I, I like what you said was um being the house manager <coughs> and kind of a in a to be a in a, a leadership position like to help jump start into recovery um explain how you know explain that a little bit because I, I feel like i can relate and i and i feel that 
that's absolutely true. Like if, when you come in, you get involved, um, and people see you do good, you know, and you get a leadership position, like it really does kind of boost me in my recovery and I, and I hold myself more accountable. Um, and it, and it just, and it kind of puts you in a position where you have to be in the herd, you know? I'm explaining that a little bit. Like, for real, like there's been a couple house managers that haven't really, you know, done a good job. They try to like hold themselves in like a higher pedestal. And like, I just, like, I would always tell myself like, yo, if, if I got the job, if I was house manager, I'm not gonna hold myself to any higher standard. Yeah, maybe once a week I might be a little bit late for curfew, for real. But all in all, like, I'm doing the same thing that everyone else has to do. You know what I mean? There was this one house manager, I'm not gonna say who it was. You know, he relapsed, but he would have his girl over. And they tell us, no, you can't have any girl over. Like, what? You girls spend the night walking around the house, bridges and shit, like, and we can't have, no, hell no. Like, what are you thinking? Like, and then it was brought up at the house, we, and he was like, man, when you get to my level, that, you know, you can have a girl over for the night. Like, fuck no, fuck you. You're not no better than anybody else, you know? So I haven't let the position get to my head because for real, like, for me, it's being able to, because they say with the good herd, you know what I mean? So what I mean by that is like, you see someone who's doing good, who's doing the work, who's going and getting involved in the service and everything, and like you can, you attract that. So now I'm in the position to where people are looking up to me. And so if I start slipping on my recovery, people in the house are gonna notice this. And they're gonna be like, well, he's house manager. Why is, this is how, this must be how you should act in recovery. You know what I mean? So I keep it like 100, I keep it honest. <coughs> and you know, it's, that way when they see that, they're like, all right, so that's what recovery looks like. Like this is what we're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like give them a, an example and go by, you know what I mean? Cause I mean, if I go get <laughs> Jeremy, it's too much, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, it, it, I wouldn't change it for the world, man. Like I, I'm in a good position. Like, it's really been a learning experience. Like, I like it, man. It's more to come. My man. man. That's on you. You up over there? <laughs> I say, you good? Yeah. We, we share a little bit? I already did. You guys share again? I share again. No. All right, sorry. You can pass. I go. All right, go ahead. Notice he got the fresh kicks on. He loves his shoes now, y'all. He always got to stay fresh. Like Cameron, he loves <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, go on, look at him. He got the uptowns on. I got the white ones. It's the wrong season, though. You're supposed to get those in the wintertime, but that's all right. He's matching them. Tell him stop judging. Tell him stop judging. How spiritual is he programmed to judge black? That's that question thing I was telling you about, man. Hey, tell him how old you are, man. 18. Just got out of high school, just got out of jail. Um, stayed clean the whole, he got out of jail, came to McShane. Like, you know, and I've seen him grow, I've seen him do good, I've seen him do, um, try. You know, everybody can't do this shit 100%. Everybody has their setbacks and shit like that. But um, I've seen him, you know, get with the good herd and, and, uh, and do what the fuck we do, man. And as a result of that, he ain't locked up no more. He's still out. He got nice clothes on and shit. He got a roof over his head, food to eat, white girls to sleep with. Like <laughs> I'm just playing. Man. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. 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 Hey, look. How much time? Uh, All right. Uh, China's gay. Say bye to everybody. China. China's bye, going to the meet downstairs. She was nervous. She did I was good, very didn't she? Nervous. You did good, China. You did good. The China dog. <laughs> Anybody got anything they want to say? Yeah, I want. I, I mean, I was gonna speak on the freedom piece until you talk. Oh, about I'm her. sorry. Go ahead. But yeah, it just feel good to just wake up and you don't smell shit from your roommate just on the toilet early in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Well, you got the press the button on the door, like, let me out the room. Like, I don't even gotta ask to come out of the room. Like, I can just get
get up and walk out. Yeah. Smoke a cigarette. It's just free, like fresh air, all that shit. So like gratitude, like. Like a lot of people, when they get out, like they're grateful of shit like that. Like the first week, two, three weeks they get out and then they start to lose that fucking gratitude and they get comfortable in yeah. their situations and they forget about that shit, that jail, the jail life and shit like that. So to consistently stay grateful a year after you fucking get out, that's how you fucking, that's what you gotta do, man. You gotta go through life consistently being grateful. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, don't let these experiences, don't let this jail bid, don't let all the bad negative shit happen. Like, be in vain. You know what I'm saying? Like, learn from that shit. Like, let that be your, your motivator to do the right thing. Like, don't by any means do not forget about it. Don't dwell on it, but don't fucking forget about it because easily we can fucking be back there in a fucking second. Bang. Thanks, Jim. She's got pretty hair, look, she's got red, pink. Tips. Oh, hey. How you doing, Nicole? I'm good. Nicole, you got anything you want to say? Um, as far as gratitude, um, I'm just grateful for everything I have now because the way I was living, I didn't even think I would be alive right now. Mm -hmm. So every day I wake up and I'm just happy to be alive. I'm happy for, well, I'm very grateful for this organization. I feel like they saved my life. And I'm just grateful to be here. And you putting the work in too, you know, like, you, like they, they, they let the resources be available, but it's, but it's up for us to utilize those resources, you know, and build a foundation here. You know, we come to this recovery program to, to build a foundation for the rest of our lives. That's a college commercial. I heard that actually. <laughs> but, Thanks for the but like, but we have to utilize these resources when we get out. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just can't go through the fucking motions. Like, we got to put some fucking work in. You know, like, and I think. Like we're all addicts just because we acquire some clean time and life is good. That doesn't mean like we don't have thoughts of using and like life is fucking peachy 100% of the time. No, nah, like, like we're going to go through fucking struggles and we're going to go through feelings of wanting to fucking get high. We're going to go through feelings of saying, fuck this person, fuck that person, fuck this, you know. And it's so easy to resort back to our own lifestyle, man. Like, like that's what the fuck we know. So, and doing something different, like this shit is all different for me, or for us, or for me at least. Like, but it's fucking worth it, man. Like, if you could just sit through those feelings, man, and, and fight temptation, and like learning to say no becomes a talent. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I can't, like, just a, a better perspective on things, man. Like, everything's perception. Everything comes from our thinking. Like, if, if we can train our thinking patterns and shit, we can train, how we feel and our emotional responses get better and like like I'm no longer controlled by my, my controlled by my emotions today like you know yeah like sometimes I feel certain ways but it, it doesn't take control over my whole fucking body man like so y'all come out here and be a beacon in recovery man y'all when y'all get out y'all come do this to show the people coming behind y'all like that's what we do like we don't like we don't we don't just keep this recovery. Like how we keep it is by sharing it and by helping other fucking people. Like that, that's how this thing works and how this thing grows, man. Like if I just sat in my room and sat in my crib and, and didn't try to help somebody else out, like, like I, I know that I would be using. I know. Like, cause that's all I've, I've ever known, man. It's fucking getting high. And like fucking, I got my own apartment. I got a crib. I got a girl, a car, I'm going to school, I got a job, like, talking about fucking responsibilities, like, I ain't never had to fucking balance this much shit in my life, man, and like, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's overwhelming, you know, but I gotta, but I gotta be grateful, man, like, I gotta be grateful I get to go up and fucking go to work and make fucking money, like, I'm fucking grateful, man, god damn, I'm grateful, so, if y'all don't like where you at, what you do is you come try this out for 90 days. If you don't like it, your misery it can be easily refunded. Yep. Hey, easily man. refunded. Because I've done it myself. Um, so we want to thank y'all for being part of this. Um, I want to thank everybody that share. This is uh, Sunday Inside Hope. We'll go ahead and close it the only way that we know how. <clears throat> and and I want to say that. one thing. Like An old, an old time he told me this. He was like, Jeremy, like, if you don't like the shit around you, Maybe you should change the shit that you're around. 
Boom. Boom shakalaka. Jeremy, who brought us here? God. God. Grant us the remedy to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for the day, keep coming back and where's the great day? Hey, and shout out to hey. Frankie, man. I got your letter, man. Frank, I want to get the chance to write you back, but. Shut up.